uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, it is actually refreshing to debate something in this chamber that is really and genuinely a priority of the Scottish people. And so I commend the Labour front bench for bringing this debate to this chamber. And I wish the SNP Green government were willing to spend more time discussing matters like this rather than some of the nonsense, the fiction, that they prefer to waste the time of this chamber with. Because I believe the national conversation about housing epitomizes what is so wrong with the system in our country. I actually thought that one of the best speeches we heard, other than from my colleagues on this side of the chamber, was from Kate Forbes. There are things about the system that need to be reformed and reformed quickly. Because for as long as I can remember, there has been cross-party consensus on the need to build more and better houses. The question we should be asking ourselves today is not if we should be building more houses. We all know and agree on the answer to that, but why we as a nation are unable to build sufficient homes to match demand. Yep. The current levels of homelessness in this country are a national disgrace, and the increasing levels of homelessness, homelessness rest solely at the feet of the minister who wishes to uh, intervene. And I'm not going to give way to the minister who's trying to intervene, because I said to him earlier, and I stand by this, that homelessness in our country has been made much worse by this SNP Green government's staggering lack of insight, their addiction to ideology, their ill-advised approach to the rental sector. Because despite expert, expert warnings, they have pressed on with measures which have brought great distress to many individuals and families. When it comes to building houses, we must properly investigate where the system is failing. The first problem is land. Yep. The process of repurposing brownfield land is too slow and is too costly, to the point that it is not economically viable to build on. Yep. We must work with those in the industry to make this process more efficient. We're all aware of neglected buildings in our respected, uh, respective constituencies. And rather than sit back and allow this to continue, leading to dereliction and local eyesores, there should be a mechanism which allows councils and private companies to repurpose these buildings or knock them down and build anew. So I'm in favour of compulsory sales orders and an end to the reluctance of councils to use the authority at their disposal to improve their election or gap sites. The second problem is planning. We need to change the culture of planning officers. There's not enough of them for a kickoff. That point was made earlier. But communities and developers need planning officers to become advisors, supporting building, facilitating, rather than blocking development. We need to see an end to the farce of endless planning permission, which leads to the blight of vacant and derelict sites, such as the one at the distillery site at Bank Knock in my constituency, where a large-scale planning application was approved in 2009 for nearly four hectares of land, which remains on Falkirk's register of vacant and derelict land. It's not good enough. And we need to include local people. Communities know. I will give way. Daniel Johnson. I'm very grateful to the member for giving me. It's not just the nature of planning. It's also, I think, Kate Forbes made an excellent point about the time it takes. And indeed, I think that's a point that Michael Gove agrees with too. Does he agree with it? Stephen I agree Kerr. with that. I mean, no wonder people give up. No wonder people leave. No wonder people stop investing. Because the whole process is frustratingly expensive and frustratingly elongated. But I'd like to return to the point about the need to engage with local people. Communities know their local areas best. They know the impact of developments on roads, on schools, on health services. Local people should feel empowered to voice their concerns, and developers should work with communities to mitigate these concerns. When we mock people for nimbyism, we should acknowledge that such attitudes exist partly because the system is defective. The minister has a brass neck to try and intervene on any of the speakers in this debate because he took not a single... Well, did you take any interventions at all? I don't think he took a single one. Maybe one, maybe one, maybe one. I've taken one. We need to 
cut red tape. And rather than developers having to navigate war and peace uh, uh, regulations, there should be concise, clear guidelines. But building new housing is not enough. It's already mentioned. It is a national disgrace that many Scots live in inadequate, damp, and energy inefficient spaces. So as well as the drive to build houses, we need to have an equally committed national mission to improve Scotland's housing stock. Housing isn't just about bricks and mortar. Poor homes uh, Mr. can Kerr impact has 20 health and left. family life. And I'm coming to a conclusion, so I'd love to have, but we just don't have enough time to debate things properly in this chamber. There is further consensus that we must improve the energy efficiency of our homes. Let's find the money to do this. In conclusion, presiding officer, we have a national housing crisis. Not only do we not have enough homes, but we also have too many inadequate homes. We need to build, we need to improve. Everyone in Scotland must have a home worthy of the name.